The bold declaration by Ibrahim Traore that he is not afraid to die has sent shockwaves through the international community. In a world dominated by Western powers, Traore's words represent a profound challenge to the long-standing strategies of fear and submission that have shaped global politics. Historically, Western nations have wielded the threat of violence, economic sanctions, and even assassinations and coups to maintain control over African leaders who dare to defy their interests. Leaders like Thomas Sankara, who were committed to the liberation and self-determination of their countries, have often been met with brutal retaliation. Traore's fearless stance is a direct rebuke of this legacy of intimidation. By declaring that he is unafraid of death, Traore is not merely making a personal statement of bravado. Rather, he is challenging the very foundation upon which Western imperialism has been built, the power of fear. For decades, the specter of violent overthrow or economic ruin has been used to keep African nations subservient to the demands of their former colonial masters. Traore's words strip away this psychological weapon, rendering it powerless. Traore's declaration resonates deeply across the African continent, serving as a rallying cry for a new era of leadership. He is calling for a fundamental shift in mindset, from one of fear and submission to one of courage and defiance. By stating that he is unafraid to die, Traore is not only speaking for himself, but for all Africans who have been oppressed and silenced by the forces of colonialism and neocolonialism. Furthermore, Traore's stance is a direct challenge to the internal enemies of progress within Africa, those who have become complicit in the exploitation of their own countries, often for personal gain. By declaring his fearlessness, Traore is throwing down the gauntlet to these actors, signaling that there is a new breed of leadership emerging that cannot be bought or bullied. Traore's vision extends beyond a mere declaration of defiance, he has also laid out a roadmap for the continent's revival, focusing on the need to banish three specific vices, cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence. Cowardice, Traore argues, has been a systemic issue that has allowed external forces to maintain their grip on the continent. It represents the unwillingness to stand up against oppressive regimes, the fear of losing power or privilege, and the preference for safety over sovereignty. Traore's call to eradicate cowardice is a demand for a new breed of leaders who are willing to confront both internal corruption and external exploitation. Betrayal, on the other hand, is a deeply ingrained problem that has plagued Africa since the days of the slave trade. It is the act of selling out one's countrymen for personal gain, often at the behest of foreign powers. Betrayal has been a tool used to undermine movements for independence and self-determination, and Traore's call to eliminate it is a call for integrity and solidarity, urging Africans to prioritize collective progress over personal profit. Incompetence, Traore argues, is perhaps the most pervasive of the three vices. It is not simply a lack of skills or knowledge, but a deliberate strategy used by the West to keep Africa dependent. Incompetence has been nurtured through foreign aid programs that create dependency rather than self-sufficiency, through educational systems that do not prioritize local knowledge, and through governance structures that reward compliance over competence. Traore's emphasis on eradicating incompetence is a demand for a new era of African leadership, one that is educated, capable, and committed to the people rather than to foreign benefactors. The West's reaction to Traore's bold declarations has been swift and telling. Western media outlets have quickly labeled him a radical, a firebrand, and even a potential dictator. This knee-jerk reaction is predictable for a system that has long relied on a narrative of African dependency and incompetence to justify its continued interference on the continent. The West's fear of Traore is not just about his leadership, but about what he represents, the possibility of a united, sovereign Africa that is no longer willing to play by the rules set in Washington, London, or Paris. Traore's refusal to be intimidated by Western threats signals a shift towards a more assertive Africa, one that demands respect and reciprocity, not charity or condescension. This is a direct challenge to the economic and political interests that Western nations have carefully cultivated over the years. The West's reaction is a testament to the power of Traore's words and the threat they pose to the carefully constructed system of neocolonialism that has kept Africa in a state of perpetual dependency. In the face of this Western backlash, 
Drory's declaration of fearlessness stands as a profound statement of African resilience and a call for a new era of leadership on the continent. His vision for a liberated Africa, free from the vices of cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence, is a bold and ambitious one, but it is one that resonates with the aspirations of millions of Africans who have long yearned for true sovereignty and self-determination. As the world watches the unfolding events in Burkina Faso, the ultimate test will be whether Traore and his fellow African leaders have the courage and the resolve to turn his words into tangible action. The road ahead may be fraught with challenges, but Traore's defiant stance has already ignited the imagination of a continent, inspiring a new generation of Africans to embrace the spirit of resistance and claim their rightful place on the global stage. If more African leaders were to adopt Traore's bold and defiant stance, the entire framework of Western influence on the continent could begin to crumble. Traore's leadership exposes the hypocrisy of Western governments, who preach democracy and human rights while backing dictators and corrupt regimes that serve their strategic and economic interests. His actions reveal the double standards that have long characterized Western policy towards Africa where stability and resource access are prioritized over genuine democracy and respect for self-determination. Traore's defiance has not only unsettled Western powers, but it has also inspired a new wave of Pan-Africanism across the continent. His leadership is prompting a re-evaluation of what African governance can and should look like, challenging the long-held assumptions and power structures that have shaped the continent's political landscape. At the heart of Traore's vision is a radical shift in the way Africans view their own identity and their relationship to the rest of the world. He understands that true independence requires more than just the absence of foreign troops, it requires a complete overhaul of the colonial mindset that has been deeply ingrained in Africa for centuries. This holistic vision of freedom is what makes his leadership so transformative. Traore's call for a break from cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence is not just a critique of the status quo, but an invitation, a call for a new kind of African leadership that is bold, competent, and unyielding in its commitment to the people. This vision of leadership is also about building a new kind of African unity, as Traore's emphasis on competence and integrity could pave the way for a new era of regional cooperation and collaboration. By focusing on building strong, independent institutions and fostering regional integration, Traore is laying the foundation for a more united and self-reliant Africa. This vision is not just aspirational, it is achievable, as the continent has the potential to become a global powerhouse, rich in resources, human capital, and innovation. However, the challenges to achieving this vision are significant. Africa faces numerous internal and external pressures, from entrenched corruption and political instability to economic dependency and external interference. Yet Traore's leadership offers a roadmap for overcoming these challenges, by prioritizing education, investing in local economies, and fostering a culture of accountability and transparency, Africa can build a future that is free from the shadow of its colonial past. As Traore continues to navigate these challenges, one must consider the broader geopolitical implications of his leadership. Can his vision for a free and independent Africa survive in a world dominated by powerful interests? The global arena is indeed a challenging environment for any leader pushing for radical change, especially one advocating for the kind of sovereignty Traore envisions. Western powers, with their deep-rooted interests in Africa, are unlikely to relinquish their influence without a fight. From economic sanctions to covert operations, there are numerous tools at their disposal to destabilize any regime that threatens their dominance. Yet Traore's vision is not without allies. As the global South becomes increasingly disillusioned with Western hegemony, a new wave of solidarity is emerging. Countries in Latin America, Asia, and the Middle East, which have also experienced the sting of colonialism and Western interference, are beginning to form alliances based on mutual respect and shared goals. Traore's stance could catalyze stronger South-South cooperation, creating a united front against Western domination. Moreover, Africa itself is not without power. The continent is rich in resources, young in population, and brimming with potential. Traore's vision for a united Africa that leverages these strengths is not only feasible but strategically sound. 
If African nations can rally together, pooling their resources and talents, they can build a formidable bloc that can stand up to any external pressure. The key to this success lies in unity and self-reliance, principles that Traore champions passionately. Yet the challenges remain significant. The West has not only economic but also cultural and psychological levers of influence, and overcoming these will require more than just political will. It will require a cultural revolution and a complete rethinking of Africa's place in the world. Traore's leadership offers a glimpse of what this new Africa could look like, confident, self-sufficient, and unafraid to assert its sovereignty on the global stage. Furthermore, Traore's vision must navigate the complexities of intra-African politics. While many African leaders share his desire for a more independent continent, aligning these diverse interests into a coherent strategy is no small feat. The African Union, regional organizations, and individual nations must come together in a concerted effort to resist external pressures and build internal capacity. This requires not only political unity but also economic collaboration, cultural exchange, and mutual support. The challenges are daunting, but Traore's leadership is already inspiring change across the continent. There is a growing recognition that the old ways of doing things no longer suffice. The continent needs bold, innovative solutions that prioritize African interests over external influences. Traore's stance is a clarion call to all African leaders to join him in this quest for true independence. As Traore continues to chart this bold course, the question is not just whether his vision will survive, but whether it will thrive. The success of his leadership will depend on his ability to navigate the complex geopolitical landscape, build coalitions, and inspire a new generation of Africans to embrace the spirit of resistance and self-determination. Ibrahim Traore's leadership marks a turning point for Africa. His fearless stance against Western imperialism, his call to banish cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence, and his vision for a united, sovereign Africa represent a radical departure from the past. Traore is not just challenging the West, he is challenging Africa itself to rise to its full potential, reject the colonial legacy, and chart a new course based on self-reliance, confidence, and unity. Traore's leadership is more than just a beacon of hope, it is a call to action for all of Africa. If the continent can rally behind leaders like Traore, who are unafraid to challenge the status quo and push for real change, then Africa's long struggle for true independence may finally be within reach. The road ahead is fraught with challenges, but with courage, unity, and determination, Africa can and will overcome. The lion has awakened, and it will not be silenced. Africa's time is now, and as we look to the future, it is clear that Traore's impact will not be confined to Burkina Faso alone. His vision has the potential to ignite a continent-wide movement, one that reimagines Africa's place in the world. It is a vision of an Africa that is not only free from the vestiges of colonialism but also a leader on the global stage, a continent that shapes its destiny and inspires others to do the same. This is the Africa that Traore envisions, and it is an Africa that is well within our reach. By embracing Traore's call for a new kind of leadership, Africa can finally shed the chains of its colonial past and forge a new path toward true independence and prosperity. This is not just a dream, it is a reality waiting to be realized. And with leaders like Traore at the helm, it is a reality that is closer than ever before. As we watch this young lion continue to roar, we can be sure of one thing, Africa is ready to rise. The question is, are you ready to rise with it? Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.